Welcome to a big episode of I Know Jax. We started doing I Know Jax six years ago in November, back when I was young and had, well, a lot less gray hair. Six years, that's six generations, if you're a mouse. <laughs> I never expected that my little show would grow up and root itself so firmly in Jacksonville, but that's exactly what happened. Now, personally, I never had a desire to be on camera. I spent many, many years behind the camera and I was very comfortable being there. But that has changed too and now I really love my job. Being on camera can be a real hassle. I have to comb my hair. I have to make sure my shirts are clean. I also have to speak, well, semi-intelligently. <laughs> and that is often difficult for me. <laughs> I'm not your typical anchor man. I don't have that <clears throat> smooth voice well coiffed hair and I, well, don't wear a suit and tie. I'm just an average Joe. I'm thrilled that you have decided to stay and celebrate I Know Jax's sixth anniversary with me. First, let's take a quick look at how it all got started. We started out shooting the show in my small living room with a sheet hanging on the wall. This is what it looked like back then. Hi, I'm Joe Talentino, and welcome to the premiere of I Know Jacks. We show local spots where eating is an experience. One place that fits the bill is the Fox Restaurant in Avondale. But before long, we had moved into an office and we were filming at the CW studio. Now, I heard it through the grapevine from some of our viewers that they like beer. So we thought we'd make a beer segment. And I thought, who better to do that than our buddy Mark Wisdom, the beer guy. I'm the beer guy. You're the beer guy. I'm the beer guy. What about wine? So I said, what about wine? And started researching all the great wine guys in Jacksonville. And I found Chris and Chislett. You with one result. I got, you, you, one result. You came up. You yeah. were the best. You were at the top of the yeah. list. I'm at the Prime Osborne. Today I'm at Epic Burger. Today I'm down at the Clara White Mission. Today I'm at Taverna Yamas. Today I'm down at Hemming Park. Hey, I'm at the 25th Annual Food Fight. Today I'm at Trey Leche in Avondale. I'm at the Clay County Fairgrounds for the Scottish Games and Festival. Today I'm down at Hemming Park to check out First Wednesday Art Walk. It's the opening of the beaches weekend here in Jack's Beach. Uh, we just finished it with just a little bit of butter. Just a little bit. <laughs> Well, in the south, that's a little but bit of butter. Little, sure. That is right. Sure. If Paula Dean was doing it, that would be a minuscule. Right, well, there would also be bacon. <laughs> there right. Exactly. Pat Graham of CW's uh, Vampire Diaries. How I like you that you say it's CW. CW. Well, we, we, we are, are here in the, Jacksonville, we are Florida. In the south. I am from Georgia, so. And you're you watching the CW. CW. You know, we just kind of get lucky on a lot of this stuff, and it, it goes well together. Well, here's to getting lucky. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I appreciate it. You're right about that. I love that. It's crazy like, stuff. It's yeah. like mm, 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 what's that? I don't know. It <laughs> tastes good. good. Exactly. <laughs> don't ask if you don't know. I have a great job. I really do. I get to meet all kinds of people, from famous people like Jane Seymour to local celebrities like Donna Deegan. I also get to go on a bunch of different adventures. Personal with dolphins on the dolphin tour. They really mean it. Look at this. I came down to Moss to check out their latest exhibit, Dinosaurs on Earth. I know Jax is a local small business. We are not owned or paid by some big media company to make the show. We have two people on staff, myself and Suzanne, my wife. That's it. The great thing about being independent is that we can do the stories we want to do. And that means lots of local stories. Now my goal is to show the best side of Jacksonville. There's often so much doom and gloom on TV, and I decided early on that I Know Jax would be different. I want to bring you the local flavor. My job is to support everything local. Without small local businesses, there will be too many big box chains and too much sameness. 
we like small and unique and I can tell that you do too. <laughs> Without the support from our local sponsors and from you, we wouldn't be able to continue to do the show. So thank you. Recently, I went to Dillard's for a fantastic fashion show to benefit Connectable Jacks. This is what it looked like. Runway models were a mix of local celebrities, store models, and individuals with intellectual and developmental differences. The show also featured the world's first supermodel with Down syndrome, Madeline Stewart from Australia, and I got a chance to talk with her mom. So Roseanne, if you would talk to me about how Madeline got started in all this. Um, two and a half years ago, uh, Madeline got on a, a fitness kick and she lost 44 pounds. And when she was finished losing weight, I'd taken her to a fashion show. And she'd never been to a fashion show before and she fell in love with it instantly. And she told me she wanted to be a model. And I thought, okay, well, if that's what she wants to do, what do we go? where do we go from here? <laughs> so I took her for a photo shoot and when the photos came back, they were amazing. I was really blown away. So I put them online with a before and after photo of how much weight she'd lost and it went viral. Seven million views later in the next couple of days and within a month she'd been invited to New York Fashion Week and from there she just kept going viral and she's been published all over the world. She's walked in uh, Russia, China, um, five seasons of New York Fashion Week, uh, Lebanon, Ukraine, um, you know, you name it. So she's a supermodel in the truest sense of the word. Yeah, she really is and she works out like a supermodel like she trains six days a week with a personal trainer and she dances five days a week she's very healthy in what she eats she's a true professional a lot of mothers contact me constantly asking me how to get their um, young ones or their adults into modeling and I have to be brutally blunt sometimes and say, well, if you want to be a catwalk model, unless you want to do a plus size show, you need to be a size zero to two. And like Madeline hasn't had junk food for two years. I mean, and every time she wants hot fries or something, I say, well, do you want to be a model or do you want to eat this? And she says, I want to be a model. And she makes that choice herself. When you, She just did eight shows in eight days at New York Fashion Week and she got no sleep and she was in makeup and hair every day. And it is a lot of hard work. So it's not the glamour and the glitz that you see on social media there's a lot of work that goes with it so you have to be very committed how does she have the amount of confidence she does because when I watch her on stage all I see is confidence and I really wish I could have that amount of confidence where does it come from I think it comes from how I brought her up I've um, when I was a young girl I told my father I wanted to be a marine biologist and he said oh you'll never get a job and I thought he thought I was stupid he actually had advertised for someone to work in the main roads and he had all these people apply that wanted that were qualified as marine biologists there was no work available but I carried that around for years so I made a pledge to myself when she was born that I would say nothing but positive things and every day I would say five positive things to her like she was beautiful she was smart she was funny you know she was amazing and she grew up only ever hearing positive things and she you say to her now oh Madeline you look beautiful she goes, yeah I know you know <laughs> she she truly has no right. problems with self-esteem because I've never let her feel that way and like when she was young if we went to the park and someone would discriminate yeah. and they would take their kids away she'd say why and I'd say oh they're going home for dinner you know I sheltered her from that sure. so she's never known discrimination she's definitely never known known anything but positivity I would right. never let anyone say anything to her that wasn't positive right. and I think that shows now because it's about pe bringing people in the community and joining up with people with intellectual differences and that is so important because you don't want to feel isolated I don't want to feel isolated right. these guys don't want to feel isolated and we're the only ones that can change that so step up and do it Connectable is a new campaign to enhance connections with people who have intellectual and developmental differences Go to ConnectableJacks.com to pledge your support. I have always had a great fashion sense, 
I always know what to wear. I never stand in front of my closet going, what am I gonna wear? My wife does that a lot. <laughs> For me, the answer is simple. All I need is a shirt. <laughs> the one that's clean and not too wrinkly. It wasn't until I was on TV that I understood that wearing a black shirt all the time is not okay with my viewers. It's, I started getting emails about my black shirts or my choice of shirts. And guess what? Over the past six years, well, not much has changed. Although I will have to say that I have added some shirts to my collection. But if you don't like what I wear, help me get a shirt sponsor. I'm really open to that. I just wanted to let you know that I'm now sending out The Insider every Tuesday. You'll get tips and ideas for cool things to do. Plus, you'll find out what I'm up to and where we're filming next that kind of stuff. You can subscribe to The Insider on my website at iknowjax.com. This week I'm getting help finding fun things to do in the Jacksonville area. Here's Tracy.com, your official funologist. Welcome to another episode of the TDC Experience. I'm here at the beautiful Jacksonville Beach. It's a rough day at work, but somebody had to do it. And speaking of Jacksonville Beach, what do you get when you combine Jacksonville and beer? Brewball! Get to the Seawalk Pavilion at Jacksonville Beach for a family-friendly fall festival. There's beer, food, music, and more. This Saturday, noon to 10 p.m. For more information, log on to brewvalljacks.com. Also coming up this weekend, have you ever wondered what it's like to sleep with a big cat? Yeah, I'm talking lions and tigers, but no bears. Oh my, it's the Caddyshack Roar and Snore. The Caddyshack Roar and Snore starts at 3 p.m. on Saturday and goes until noon on Sunday. They'll roar while you snore. That's right, these nocturnal animals will be up all night keeping an eye on you. Tiny houses in the hood. That's right, have you ever wondered what it's like to live in a tiny house? Well, this weekend you can see what all the fuss is about. The Tiny House Festival is at the St. John's County Fairgrounds, and believe me, if you're curious about what it's like to live in a tiny house, there will be plenty of tiny houses and plenty of not-so-tiny people to tell you all about it. And tune in next weekend when Joe actually goes to the Tiny House Festival. So if you didn't make it out, you can see what it's all about, and hopefully he didn't get in the doghouse while he was there. And speaking of dogs, it's the Top Dog Top Golf Fundraiser. This is a fundraiser for Dog Fest. Be sure to register for that as well. The registration for the Top Golf Day event is $100 per person and includes three hours of golf. That's right, that is a whole lot of Top Golf, my friends. And finally, November is National Writing Month. Are you working on a book? I am. Follow along my progress on my Facebook page. And if you're writing a book, we want to hear from you. Log on to the I Know Jax Facebook page and send us a message. Who knows, you might end up on a future episode of I Know Jax. To follow along with all the latest antics that Joe's doing and my serious, okay, not so serious, the TDC experience, log on to our Facebook page on a regular basis, I Know Jax. And remember, if you're bored in Jacksonville, it's your own fault. I can't wait for the Tiny House Festival. Last year they had 60,000 people come out to the festival. Now I talked to John, the organizer, the other day and he's saying that it is the largest Tiny House Festival in the world. This year they'll have about a hundred small dwellings, that's tiny houses, converted buses, and a couple of yurts and more. Now make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel because I'm definitely going to be doing videos from the festival. And this year, Eco Relics has built a tiny house together with a local chapter of the U.S. Green Builders Coalition. It's going to be out at the festival as well. It's going to be a big weekend. Now, St. Augustine is also kicking off their Night of Lights for the holiday season, and that's huge. There's the Riverside Wine Fest, a catfish festival in Kingsland, Georgia, and let's not forget about Tour to Farm on Sunday. Now, for all event details, visit my post fun things to do in November on, you guessed it, iknowjacks.com. Hi, my name is Kyra and it is time to get your think on. What is the southernmost state capital in the United States? Yes. Hi. 
Hi, my name is Kyra and it is time to get your think on. We asked, what is the southernmost state capital in the United States? The answer is Honolulu, Hawaii. Please join us at any of our 50 locations in Northeast Florida. Just go to TriviaNation.com for more details. But today we're going to visit one of my favorite little hole-in-the-wall places on Mayport Road. I'm here at Hangar Bay on Mayport Road and I'm trying my favorite dish here which is the Hellfire Ramen and Fried Chicken Combo. I know it sounds weird, but it tastes great. Hellfire is our version of what's known as Tantan uh, Ramen in Japan, which is uh, done the Hangar Bay way. We make a homemade spicy ground pork, throw some scallions, green onions on there, and obviously the noodles. Uh, it's got a nice spicy bite to it. It's about three, three and a half out of five not meant to blow anyone out of the water, but have a nice little kick to it to make it different than the other traditional ramen we sell. So what possessed you to take up doing ramen and fried chicken together? Uh, there was no ramen in this area. No one has done fried chicken and ramen to my knowledge. Ramen's easy to make, it's noodles and water, and more importantly, who doesn't like fried chicken? military theme is different. Um, I think the fact that chicken and ramen is unique. Uh, that's a draw for people who are willing to get out of their box. Uh, if they can get past the idea of, well, what's that all about? Then usually they find something on the menu that they like. So we have what's known as the best fries ever, which also takes the Hellfire concept, uh, adds six types of cheeses, uh, scallions, green onions over french fries, which are already very good fries. Uh, we've got the Mark 50, which is a spicy sausage sandwich, also based on the, the Hellfire topping. So if you like a spicy dog, that's going to be it right there. Um, and we have mac and cheese, fried mac and cheese, and fried homemade biscuits, which are also very unique. So having a restaurant is like flying a helicopter. When you're flying a helicopter, you're trying to keep 50,000 moving pieces together going in one direction and one speed. That's kind of like a restaurant. I know they think the Hellfire is spicy, but me, I'd like to kick it up another notch or two. Listen, if you have a favorite dish somewhere that I should try, let me know. Maybe I'll try it. Six years, baby, six years. I hope we'll have six more and with your help, I'm sure we will. If you're interested, go to my website to read more about the Ambassador Program. I really want to get that going before the holidays. Thanks for watching. I'll be back with another episode next weekend, but before then, I'll see you on the internet. <laughs>